Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Prince of Investing, Prince Dice, coming all the way live from the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado, even though I know we're broadcasting right now live in a beautiful state of Hollywood, Hawaii. But as always, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, share button, and hit the bell icon if you're catching this live on the, you know, in ThinkTech or wherever you may be catching this or on the YouTube channel, the playback or the podcast. Uh, drop comments. You got comments below. Hit that description box. Check out some other great stuff that we're doing and to get in contact with me. Also, um, I think that's about it. But as always, don't forget to hit that like. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And as always, I don't have a lot of time. I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time. Who's going to jump straight into it? So today's show, as you can see, is going to be about ETFs versus index funds. ETFs versus index funds. ETFs, we're going to talk about what are ETFs. We're going to talk about the uh, what are index funds. We're going to talk about how they're similar, how they're different, and how I recommend them as well. You know, pros and cons of each, all the other great stuff. So sit back and let's have a great show. So the first thing is, what is an ETF? An ETF is an exchange-traded fund. It trades much like a stock, right? It pretty much tracks something. They're hot on the market right now. And the reason why they're hot, is, hot right now is because of they're a passive way of investing um, versus a mutual fund, which is more of an active way of investing. For prime example, you can purchase an ETF just like this a stock, and it can track the retail industry, the oil industry, all these other good things like that. Fees are relatively low. Um, it doesn't try to beat the oil industry, anything like that or whatnot. Uh, sometimes they pay dividends, much like the stock, which a mutual fund does too. But they're like the new hot thing. I think it was created by uh, Vanguard, Jeff Bogan, Joe Bogan. I think he, he introduced the ETF to the market about 20 years ago, if not even longer. But uh, anyway, that's kind of what a quick gist of what an ETF is, right? Now, now we're going to talk about what is an index fund. An uh, index fund is something that's been made very famous with most investors due to Warren Buffett, uh, we know, the greatest investor of our time. He says, hey, you know, purchase an index fund, put your money into it, you'll be good to go. An index fund that tricks the S&P 500. If you follow this show, you know stock symbol, I think it's SWPPX is the one um, that I recommend. No, I'm not sponsored by them or telling you this or whatever. And it's the best one that I know of right now because it tracks the S&P 500. It has the lowest expense ratios, and it's pretty cheap to get into. I think that one is owned by, uh, I can't think of a company right now coming come to the top of my head, but, you know, it's like 40 something dollars for it. You can buy it every single month. And it's a commission-free ETF as well. It's a commission-free uh, index fund, I meant to say. It's a commission-free index fund, meaning that when you buy it, you're not paying a commission on it as long as you keep it for like 90 days. So one, so someone who is purchase, purchasing the index fund over and over, following the advice of Warren Buffett and having the dividends reinvested, that's the way you can do it with the index fund. You know, it tracks one of the major indexes, whether it's the S&P 500, NASDAQ, those are the top, the big three dogs. Um, so now we know what the ETF is. Now we know what the index fund is. We're going to compare and contrast them. Now, when you compare them, how they both do the same thing is that both of them just track something. Both of them just tracks the index. Both of them just tracks something, right? Now, with the ETF, uh, for prime example, um, it, both of them track ETF and the index just pretty much tracks uh, an index fund is tracking an index, particular index. Or ETF is tracking a particular uh, sector. Most cases, you know, most times, it's con you know, maybe, maybe it does the S and P 500, it does petroleum, it does all different things like that. So that's what they kind of the same. They're both passively managed. What I mean by passively being managed is that they are. No one is back there trying to beat the market or beat the index. So the, the, the turnover ratio is pretty low. Turnover means that usually on a mutual fund, um, this thing is trying to beat the market or beat something. So it's trading stocks in and out. It's picking stocks. And when you buy and sell stocks, it costs money, right? Transaction fees. So the turnover, as the turnover ratio increases, so does the expense ratio. So that's something I want you guys to think about, the S&P 500, right? Not the S&P 500, but the turnover ratio and expenses. 
So both of them are pretty passive, so they kind of track the same. They both track something. They both do it on a passive uh, level. That's where they're, they are the same. Where they are different is, where well, the biggest difference between them is the index fund is a, uh, if you get a commission-free index fund, every time you buy it, there is no commission to it. So for prime example, how does TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, Scott Trade, how do they make their money? In most cases, they make their money of the market, and stockbrokers make their money when you buy and sell transaction. Hey, can you buy me four stock? Hey, can you sell Amazon stock? Hey, can you buy me four of these? And can you sell these? Can you buy me this every single month? Those are transaction fees. Every time you run across the line, I call it run across the line, those are transaction fees. When you buy stocks, when you buy ETF. Now, you can have a commission-free index fund, and you do have commission-free ETFs as well. You know, let me not caveat that as well, but you do have commission-free ETFs as well, just like you have a commission-free index. And the thing is, if you're indexing um, and you're buying the same thing over and over, those transaction fees can add up. For prime example, let's say if you brought one ETF every single month, let's say the ETF VU, which is Vanguard's uh, S&P 500 tracker, right? And you buy it every single month. You buy $5 worth, you buy $6 worth, you buy, not $5 worth, every month you buy one share of VU, D-O-O. And you do that every single month. Let's say every time you buy it, it costs you six, six bucks a month, right? And you bought it from E-Trade or TD Ameritrade or whatever. Maybe it may be available on a free app like Robinhood. I'm not sure. But every time you buy this particular thing, um, and so if you did that six times, you did it. Let's say if you did it for ten months, right? Or just do it. Say you did it for a whole year. That's seventy-two. If my math is correct, right? Yes, yeah, seventy-two. So you pay six dollars every single month. Right, because you just brought the same old ETF over and over that tracks the S and P 500, and you pay six bucks, six bucks, six bucks. Hey, it doesn't really matter to me. But in the year, that's seventy-two dollars that you paid in the fees. The next year, that's a hundred and a hundred and forty-four dollars. You pay any compounds and compounds and compounds because you just buying it, right? Now, is it good that you're investing that way? Hey, that's good because it's always a good thing that you're investing in the first place. You invest into the S&P 500, something that has a nice track record. That's always a good thing. But if you go to, uh, if you get a commission-free index, um, you get a commission-free uh, index. That is, you can pretty much skip over those fees and not pay the six bucks a month as long as you hold it for three. Uh, I think it's like 90 days. As long as you don't sell it within 90 days, it's commission-free. So you can buy it over and 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 com- collect no fees along the way, right? So that's what a commission-free index can do for you versus uh, your what you call it. So for now on, um, for now on, that's a, a great way to look at things and to and to do things, right? So that's what a commission, that's what an ETF is, and that's what an index is. That's how they kind of look the same. What it kind of differs is when it comes down to that little fee structure a little bit, but granted there are commission-free ETFs and there are commission-free index funds, and not all index funds are commission-free. Not all ETFs are, you know, charging. I know VOO, for example, does charge. You know, it's not commission-free. But you may be able to go out there and search a commission-free ETF. Uh, and, and the ETFs, they you can purchase and sell them fast, much like you can do a stock. So for me personally, if I'm going for a long-term, long-term investor, I'm going to use the SWPPX, I think, if I'm saying that right. And I'm going to, that's what I do for myself and my son. I just buy that continuously every single month and forget about it, right? And it tracks and have the dividends reinvested. Now I'm in the S&P 500. That's the best thing on the market that I know of right now. But as I learn and search, I learn and search new things every day. So, but in, in, in long story short, that's how, that's what an ETF is. That's what an index fund is. That's how they kind of the same. That's how they kind of differ. And that's my recommendation on what I do. Because I used to do ETF VU, VOO, very big time in that, which is pretty good. But VU has a 0.04 expense ratio. And the index fund that I'm giving you guys has a 0.03 expense ratio. So it's slight lower. And also, the index fund is commission free. So every time I buy every single month for myself and my son, it's commission free. But every time I buy for my, uh, every time I purchase the ETF, I have to pay six bucks to TD Ameritrade or E Trade or whoever I buy it from. And the expense ratio is a tad bit uh, higher when they both have the same exact performance and had both exact same mission. So why am I paying more for it, right? If you're getting the exact same gas from two different places, but across the street it was five dollars, and somewhere else it was four dollars. 
then it's no different. You're probably going to get the one for four dollars. But that's just me. And if you are purchasing it, that doesn't mean that you're doing bad. Think about it in finance. It's always good, better, and best. So, but anyway, this is going to be a short episode. I want to tell you guys that, give you guys my input on that. Um, as always, I'm going to go ahead and close out the show and say thank you. Thank, check you out. Check us out on all of our social media platforms, and don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, comment, and share button. Until the next video podcast show that you see us do across the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.